Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm taking a look at the fourth volume of the current Nova series. Uh, this one is titled Original Sin because it does have a tie-in to the Original Sin crossover event, but it's not that directly tied to the Original Sin stuff. I only know so much about that crossover event, and maybe at some point in the future I'll go ahead and read it, but uh, there's one issue in here that does sort of tie into that uh, pretty directly, but beyond that, the rest of it is about Nova, and I very much appreciate that. Um, in the past, there were some Marvel comic events where whatever you were reading, be it Iron Man or Spider-Man or Captain America, what have you, um, a good chunk of a certain tradeback would tie into whatever their current crossover event was. And they've kind of lessened on that a little bit lately, and I appreciate that um, because it doesn't make me feel like I'm out of the loop. Uh, it also doesn't feel like they're trying to push as much uh, for me to go pick up that series. Obviously, it's a good marketing scheme for them to do that, because then they get more sales out of people going to look up this other series or this tie-in with some other crossover event or whatever, and purchasing it to, you know, understand where Nova or where the Guardians of the Galaxy or where Hulk were at during these uh, chunks of time. But this is a relatively meaty Nova volume. Um, all of them have been pretty good in terms of, you know, how many issues I'm getting uh, per release and how thick those individual issues are, uh, this one feels even more so meaty, and I, I very much appreciate that, um, especially because Nova is one of my current favorite comic book series running right now. Um, it's one of those that I kind of took a gamble with when I first picked it up and was just like, we'll see how this is, and I'm very glad that I did because I'm really enjoying it. Um, so you can see here on the cover art we have Sam as the current Nova, Rocket Raccoon, who does make a guest appearance again later in this. He was in, uh, I believe, the first volume with Gamora for a little while. Um, and he shows up kind of in the second half of this collection. And then uh, Sam's dad there, who has been sort of uh, this point of interest throughout the series so far. He's kind of dipped in and out of importance, I guess, uh, with regards to how big a role he's playing on the, the story at hand. And uh, it kind of comes back into the spotlight here in this volume in particular. And they do some very interesting things with it that I'm, I'm very glad that it wasn't just a simple right off of how we're going to solve this. Uh, this whole issue of his dad being on the other side of the galaxy and not having his Nova powers and Sam not knowing exactly where to look. So taking a look at the spine here, very similar to all the other current Marvel stuff. Just got original Sin, Nova there on the bottom. And then on the back we have Nova and the Watcher. And the thing about the Watcher uh, with regards to Nova is that it was sort of one of his first contacts in the world of superheroes and cosmic business. Um, his his One of his friends, uh, really. And even though the Watcher doesn't talk to uh, Nova so much, he does go to him to advice and sort of, you know, to uh, sort of solidify what it is that he's all about. You know, the, the heroics that he's trying to do, the family that he's trying to... Uh, keep safe and and help his mom out and, you know, make sure his sister doesn't get into trouble, um, which is kind of one of the first points that comes up here. Um, this issue, I, I definitely appreciate the fact that this is sort of like a modern Spider-Man to me, in that it's about this, you know, sort of everyday kid dealing with superpowers and his home life and his schooling and all that, and he has to find a way to balance all of these, and it's, it's tough for him, but He's a very likable character, and the fact that he's younger, I think, works in great advantage to the series. Now, it's kind of been hinted at throughout the previous volumes that his mom is in on the Nova story more than uh, she's told him, and uh, it's kind of comes to a point where it's just like, yeah, she recognizes that he has to, uh, you know, police the galaxy. He has to be this hero, and that she's okay with that to a certain degree, but she, you know, is always worried about him and his safety, and that's that's very understandable, a very human thing. Um, we also see uh, Sam and his family kind of dealing with uh, a potential move to a new home, and sort of the struggle that he feels with that, um, as well as the fact that he's been out of school quite a bit, and, uh, you know, the principal's threatened that he'll get suspended or expelled if he doesn't show up, even though Sam's got a lot bigger things to worry about uh, than his grades. Uh, we also have some very interesting things with Sam's dad uh, and his past, and we find out some things about him that um, are maybe not so great, and Sam has to kind of go figure out what's really at 
play here. You know, is is his dad maybe not the hero that he thought he was, or um, is there something else going on? And that's where Rocket kind of comes in. The two of them end up going to find this uh, kind of black market dealer, kind of sketchy guy uh, on nowhere, who promises he has some information about Sam's dad, and they end up getting into a bit of a scuffle. Um, and that's sort of where the second half of this collection focuses more. So the first half is more about... Again, Sam balancing his home life and his his superhero antics, uh, his cosmic adventures. Um, And then there's a a bit more of a real impending threat, a more immediate threat during this uh, second half. But I do appreciate with um, Nova in particular, with the guest characters they've put in, uh, it feels like they have a pretty prominent role in this. It's not just a one-issue sort of thing, and then they're they're out of the picture. They stick around for a good three, four issues each time. Uh, previously, we had Beta Ray Bill. We had Rocket Raccoon and Gamora before, like I mentioned. Uh, Rocket comes back. Cosmo's here. And so when they do these guest characters, I really feel like they're doing it for the long haul. You know, Sam is establishing these relationships with those characters so that he can call on them later on for help or can, you know, reunite with them in some capacity in a later issue of the Nova series. So I definitely appreciate that. Uh, the art throughout, again, is great. Lots of cool colors there in the sort of the dark uh, alien environments. The light blue glow from uh, his uh, beams there on his suit. Uh, we also have a little end chapter where he meets up with some other superheroes uh, and mutants his own age and sort of has this, you know, just run around on Halloween night and dress up in costume and, uh, you know, they can kind of get away with that a lot easier because they're... not all of them are actually in costume. Some of them are, but uh, a lot of them is just sort of how they look anyways. And even though I'm not that familiar with a lot of these characters, uh, I definitely appreciate it as Sam's kind of coming into his own. Uh, He's more comfortable with who he is and has other kids who uh, are a lot like him to fall back on, to a certain degree, to, to relate to. And uh, it's just a really simple story of them uh, dealing with these kind of punk teenagers who steal some candy from little kids and, you know, getting it back from them. And it's a little cheesy, but at the same time, um, I enjoyed the greater purpose for it. Uh, then we do have, at the end, uh, some more ties to Sam's dad, leading up to what I believe we'll be covering in the next volume, as well as the lead-in to uh, the Secret Wars stuff. Uh, because the Infinity Gauntlet cover art for the new Secret Wars uh, showed off that there were four different Novas beneath Thanos and, you know, Star-Lord's in the background there. Uh, but upon closer inspection, it looks like those four Novas are actually Sam, his dad, his mom, and his sister. So it'll be interesting to see if they actually, you know, all take on uh, different Nova armors or if it's just for the sake of artwork and it's, you know, Sam and his dad or or just Sam or how it's going to play out. But, um... I definitely recommend this this series uh, quite highly to anyone who's into uh, like that sort of classic Spider-Man angle that I mentioned before, where it's you know a, a everyday kid dealing with both everyday problems and the bigger superhero cosmic problems. Uh, the fact that it is a cosmic angle to this instead of an Earth-based superhero uh, antics sort of thing it makes it very interesting. There's a lot of potential there that they could do, and I'm glad they haven't tapped into too much of it yet. I'm, I'm glad they've sort of restricted themselves in terms of which characters they're utilizing, uh, which places they're visiting, and just how big a scope they're taking on with this. Because with one guy, uh, namely a kid policing the galaxy, it's a little bit different than when Richard Ryder was the main Nova. You know, he didn't have any other responsibilities to worry about uh, than the galaxy itself. And with Sam, he has to to balance all these different factors in his life. So I really like the way they're handling this. The writing this is great. Uh, It's a lot of fun, but it's also really well thought out. And I'm really waiting to, uh, really excited to see what they're going to do with the uh, next volume, as well as the lead into Secret Wars and Battle World and all that. So that's pretty much it for this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.